Hello, everybody. I was uh, interested in animation and rigging for quite a while, but never got into it. It was just another huge area. And what finally motivated me was the channel from Alex Tango. I put uh, the link to his channel in the description. Go and have a look. He has some really nice animations. I, I especially like his uh, Wankel rotary engine, which is great, I think. Anyway, when I started, uh, when I wanted to start with animations, I was looking for something easy to start with, you know, something which gives me the first few ideas. And to be honest, I found a lot, but I didn't find anything easy. And this is why I decided to make uh, an animation series myself. I hope you like it and let's start. This was my first model and uh, when I saw Alex Tango's uh, Geneva wheel, well, I didn't know how to do that and I thought I'd do something easier. And this is the first of uh, several uh, little tutorials. So here is the model and uh, I am in the model tab. So I go to the setup tab. We have several uh, meshes. One is a static mesh, which contains all the geometry which will not be animated. The mover is this part here and the disk is the rotating one. Now, the first thing I uh, always do, and by the way, I'm really not a pro in animation and rigging, so if you know better ways, please let us all know in the comments and let us all learn a bit from your experience. Anyway, the first thing I do is uh, I put the centers to the right positions. Let's start with the static one, although it uh, is not needed. I still do it because I think it looks tidier. So in uh, polygon mode, I select these two, go to the work plane, align work plane to selection, then press seven on the keyboard or click on the centers button here left click once on the center, go to setup and click on to work plane position and the center will move to there. Now I go to the mover, do the same here. Here I need the inner ring, work plane, align work plane to selection, seven key on the keyboard, click on the center and to work plane position. And finally on the disk, this one looks good, but anyway, I select this here, work plane to selection, and press seven on the keyboard, click on the center to work plane position. Now, we are ready to start. The first thing is to reset the work plane. And the first thing is this disk must rotate. So um, if we go to the properties, if I press the E key, then I see the only thing he can rotate is around the Y. And this is what we will animate first. So be sure you are on key zero and click on the Y. Now it changes to red and red means it is an animated channel and we have a key set which is currently zero degrees. 
Then I click on frame 40. You see this is green. Green means it's an animated channel, but no key has been set. So let's do that. 360 degrees. And now I can uh, rotate this. But you see, as soon as I go past frame 40, it stops. And this can easily be changed by changing um, the behaviors of the pre and post from constant to linear and linear here. And now it plays forever. Good. The next thing is we need this round driver part to put the locator into it. I could do it differently. I will show how in one of my next videos, but for today I put a locator in. I can either click on here or press the L key on the keyboard and we got the locator and uh, now it has changed to items mode. In items mode we need to see the eye otherwise no geometry is displayed. So let's see where this locator went. Uh, let me check if I display them, show locators and centers I have on selected. Be sure you have this as well. And now I can position this locator uh, W key, bring it to the middle here. Like so. We could also do it like we did with the centers, with the work plane, but this is good enough for now. If you feel uh, the locators are too big, you can change that when you go to the display tab. And here is a size thing, I put this to point 0.2. Good. Now we have this locator, let's check if it's in the proper position by bringing out the mover, W key, a bit more, like so. Now we have our locator in the proper position, but it will not move with the disk, it will just stay where it was. And the reason is that we have to parent it. And first I give it the meaningful name. This is uh, the driver locator. And I parent this one to the disk. Now we have a hierarchy here. The parent is the disk and the child is the driver locator. Now when I play the animation the locator will travel with the disk. Next we need to do something which results in a horizontal movement. And I must say it took me quite a while to find this only after I read everything I found about all the constraints I came to this intersect linear curve and here it says select the item to project from followed by a mesh item containing a linear curve. And what I also found out is that all these intersects create additional uh, locators. And this is exactly what we need. So first we need to make a curve in a new mesh. So N for a new mesh. And I bring this out below the static. Rename it to curve. And press F2. And 
make a curve from here to here. This must be zero and this must be zero as well. Okay. Now I check the location. Mm. I go to polygon mode, select the curve W key and bring it up to to about here and a bit closer, like so. Perspective. Now I can select this locator in item mode, so press the 5 key and then control click on this curve mesh and then press intersect line linear curve and now it has generated a new locator for us I can select it make it also a bit smaller 0.2 and if I run the animation now you see we have a locator which makes a horizontal movement and this is exactly what I was looking for and now I can rename this locator to um, mover locator and can parent my mover to this new locator and make it visible in the scene and if I run the animation now, if I uh, want to know if it fits to the render camera, I select the render camera and when I'm happy with it, I can go to render, render animation. It starts with frame 1, which is good, because we should either have 0 to 39 or 1 to 40, otherwise we have duplicate uh, frames on 0 and 40. So 1 to 40, and I want a movie. Okay, I call the movie test, save, yes. OK, and now these 40 frames are rendered. And here it is. I can now go to my uh, favorite video uh, software. I have uh, uh, that's in here test dot move and then I can select it put it to the timeline and here is our animation it is of course a bit short so I can duplicate it a couple of times now it's 20 seconds that's good enough to get an impression And here it is. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Take care and have fun modeling with Modo. See you some other time. Bye bye.